Can you explain how one of your reports is different than another on that topic? I got no idea where this room came from. The Young Thug YSL Rico trial got intense yesterday. Thug's lawyer, Brian Steele, gets irritated that he's interrupted by the prosecutor way more than he's ever been. Two different motions to suppress evidence are discussed about traffic stops involving Thug and Gunna, dating all the way back to 2013 and 2017. Brian Steele hands him his own police report that is different than the state's exhibit. Very bizarre. I don't know how that would happen. Like, details are left out. The police officer turns red. <laughs> if you're watching, don't subscribe. I'll keep covering this. Let's get right into it. Wrestled with whether or not the stop was lawful given that a lower court, a state court, had deemed it unconstitutional. Mr. Steele's motion, Mr. Williams' motion to suppress the stop, and that's the trial court granted the motion to suppress the stop. So she's talking about when uh, Thug and Gunna got pulled over. I believe there was a legal firearm in the car and it's on body cam. His lawyer, Mr. Steele, you know, put in a motion to suppress it and that motion was granted. The Court of Appeals uh, stated the facts in the light most favorable to uphold the trial courts, um, finding that the stop was not lawful and suppression of items found during the stop because the stop was not lawful. Even when viewing those facts in a light most favorable to the finding, most favorable to the ruling made by the trial court, the Court of Appeals ultimately ruled are ultimately stated on page eight, the state appeals arguing that the trial court erred by granting the defendant's motion to suppress. Now, the court, in a footnote, I believe that it was... She seems to be kind of all over the place. She doesn't really seem prepared. She's like reading straight off a of paper and struggling. Three, I think the footnote three says the officer placed all three men on the curb at which time they were in custody. Before Thank the you, The suspects judge. were advised of their, their rights pursuant to Miranda versus Arizona. Judge had to butt in to help her. Thank you, Judge. Thank you for finding that. And that's exactly the footnote that I was looking for. The Miranda rights were read where the defendant stated that he had had the gun found in his bag for a while. Reflected on page 60 of the transcript, I was, I'm going to argue he was advised of his right to remain silent. And when he said I had the gun for a while, we're going to seek for admission for that statement. So the statements that the prosecutor um, made reference to and qualified in the transcript of the hearing on the motion to suppress are not statements that can credibly be asserted as statements that the prosecutor sought to or conceded were not admissible. The Court of Appeals clearly found on page 11, the last page of the opinion, the trial court erred. The so Court of Appeals basically overturned what the trial court said. Because the Court of Appeals found that the trial court erred and because that issue has been litigated, the, that the uh, defendant not be allowed to relitigate, relitigate. So yeah, Thug apparently like kind of addressed that he had the gun for a while or something along those lines. She's saying that's an admission. There was a firearm discovered to be stolen, another firearm. There were pill bottles, um, a Sprite bottle with liquid suspected to be promethazine. There was money, rubber bands, as well as marijuana, Xanax, Xanax pills, Lortab, Adderall, purple pills, blue pills, multicolored pills. A whole entire pharmacy in this bitch. God damn. And all of those items were collected and placed into property. Some of the items, um, such as the marijuana, was found in a jar inside uh, the armrest. Stopped the car. They stopped the car as the Court of Appeals um, found pursuant to the trial court's findings, that the, the car was lawfully stopped when Officer Fikes noticed uh, as the car drove past him that he could see his reflection in the back window and in the rear passenger windows, and he made a lawful traffic stop on the vehicle. That stop occurred about two and a half minutes after he first noticed the vehicle pass him. When he asked the occupants of the vehicle to let down the windows because he could not see who was inside the car, he asked them to let down all of the windows. When he did, he smelled the odor of marijuana emanating from within the car. Um, one of the occupants of the car indicated, I believe it was Mr. Jones, that he had just smoked marijuana. They had just smoked marijuana prior to getting in the car. Uh, the officer asked whether there were firearms in the car, something like that. Uh, Jones denied that. The uh, stolen firearm was found inside a red bag that also had inside it the defendant's wallet and some money. The state would um, be introduced that evidence uh, in this case. Ye yes, Your Honor. Um, deny the defendant's motion to suppress number eight for all of the reasons that we have uh, presented to the court. I tried to follow the prosecutor. I got lost. I apologize a couple of times. Mr. Williams never argued or asserted in motion to limit number four or motion to suppress number eight that he was challenging the stop again. In fact, it was me. I'm arguing about statements. What the prosecutor said, um, I take uh, and understand that you had very strong language, how I'm, I'm not being straight with this honorable court or whatever language is, but... Well, I, I'm not. I'm, let me just. No, let me just, no way. Uh, I, I know you don't. It just it happens all the time. It's just a bizarre way to litigate. For me, I, I don't know. No one else treats me like this. I don't treat anyone like this. 
the state is wrong. The statement, and if you just have a transcript, I don't know if you do, Your Honor. I do have the transcript from the uh, from that particular hearing. Before the Honorable Judge Ackwood. Yes, I just want to refer my uh, attention to it. Uh, but it's all Ackwood. The state just doesn't understand the issues. It's transcript 41. Bro's coming up just baffled. Like, I've never had to deal with a, a prosecutor like this. Like, damn. She's not reading the transcript right. That's what he said, I think. Jones, meaning there's a co defendant. Three people in the car. Mr. Kitchens, Mr. Cedric Jones. Cedric is C E D R I C. Jones is typical starring Mr. Williams. The Jones stated the firearm was his. On line seven, question. Okay, now in the middle of, he said it was his. Was that conversation just with Officer Fikes, which is F-I-K-E-S, and the defendant Jones? Answer, yes, sir. What else happened as Officer Fikes was searching the red bag? Answer, I believe he recovered me, Officer Fikes, a large quantity of cash, U.S. currency. I don't know how much it was, but I recall, recall Mr. Williams, number two. They were using, number one is Mr. Kitchens, number two is Mr. Williams, number three is Mr. Cedric Jones. Okay. Between each other, talking to each other. I know Mr. Williams asked why he, meaning Mr. Cedric Jones, said the bag was his. Mr. Jones had said it was, that was his bag, and then he stated something along the lines, along the lines of the weapon was his, but he had put it in that bag, meaning Mr. Jones. And that's what the prosecutor says, and that was defendant Jones. Mr. Williams, defendant number two, stated, why would you tell him it's your bag? Why would you tell him my bag was your bag? I, the reason, I, I just don't know how to respond. You need to make a ruling. There was no Miranda given. You're going here if you want to. And Judge Adams found it. The state conceded in DeKalb County. The Court of Appeals of Georgia wrote it in footnote. So yeah, if the state, excuse me. Let, 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 let me finish, Mr. Let me finish. Okay, so. Okay. He's always trying to, I'm going to be honest, this prosecutor is always interrupting him, but he lets her go in like fucking lengths. Like I've watched probably like 50 hours of this trial. She interrupts him all the time. He rarely interrupts her. Apparently the Miranda rights were not read correctly and they were inaccurate. Okay, well, let me ask you about, the, about this. It looks like from considering the transcript before Judge, before Judge Gregory A. Adams. After Miranda is read. There's no Miranda read, but you, you need to hear it. The Miranda is inaccurate. It's incomplete. So there's no Miranda. But if the state is saying that these are spontaneous utterances and they listed you a couple, I just, in the transcript, one of them they're just wrong on. It's not Mr. Williams' gun. It was never said. But two, that's why we're having a hearing. So, you know, I sit here. I don't interrupt Ms. Love at all. And, and if this is the way, you are, and I, I need to bring this up to the court, if we are going to be doing opening statements with interruptions, cross-examination with interruptions, I am going to ask the court to admonish and take action against Ms. Love because I sat here for a year, it feels like, being interrupted on every quality, proper statement. And all the objections are the same. Asked and answered, vague. Um, yeah, no, I He's popping off. He said he wants to admonish her. Excuse yeah, me, Ms. Love. You have to, you have to. And I'm going to object to being spoken to by Mr. Steele in a condescending manner on the record. I'm just speaking let, me, let him finish and then I'll let you respond, okay? Thank you, Let him finish. Right. And, and if we're going The judge is even getting a little annoyed. That's crazy. I sit here during opening statements and I'm telling the court, and, and I, I don't want to do this. I am going to object to everything that I believe there is a good faith basis. That is everything. I'm going to be standing up and you know how bad that is going to be for all of us? That is just wrong to do it to a jury and to each other. But if that's the way this- Oh, he's saying he's going to object to anything and everything. Oh, no. This trial is going to take fucking forever, dude. Georgia thinks it's good to litigate. I, I understand. Well, I'm just going to- I'm going to advise both and all counsel that, you know, this is your trial and it should be the best trial that we can give this jury so they can make a decision based upon the facts and the evidence. But um, that's all, you know, you all know your roles as professional advocates. And I fair and as clean a trial as you as, as, as this court can give you. And remember, that's your find your fact over there. So uh, they take a look at everything. And so I would just kind of sometimes being professional is just is, is, is not responding to everything you possibly could presenting the best case you can. I, I, mean, I don't say I listen. I look, you all have fought like Titans. You continue really. to fight like Titans. All right. But there you do have to kind of look at things from the standpoint of of uh you know your fa of your fact finder and your roles as advocates and colleagues um you know uh, the way you treat one another uh, is seen by everybody to include that jury i and, agree and, and, it, and it will taint your presentation I, i've debriefed hundreds of juries and i'll give you one kernel of my of my debriefing them is they watch everything and they make judgments about you as lawyers on the result of me debriefing hundreds of jurors hundreds of juries at this point in time in my career so i'm just telling you at this point it's not a road you want to go down I know y'all are better than that, but I would kind of just ask you to reevaluate the way you talk to one another, okay? He asked him to warn the prosecutor, but then the judge ended up warning both of them to be cordial and professional and not make this combative. So it didn't really go the uh, lawyer's way at all. This, I'm, I'm asking you to admonish if it's a frivolous motion, if it's a frivolous objection, because that's what I get. With that being said, it's the same right now. I'm ready for a hearing. I have put everyone on notice. I am moving to suppress statements. They've already been suppressed and conceded. Those aren't the statements. The state agrees with that. If I understand you correctly, Mr. Steele, the, the statements prior to the Miranda at all, um, would you would not have any argument as to? 
No, I'm, no. I'm saying, I'm saying no Miranda was given. It was given inarticulately, or excuse me, inaccurately late. What I'm saying is the state just announced we want to get in certain statements. One of the statements isn't even Mr. William. Whatever they want to do, I'm ready for the hearing. They have two statements or three statements they want to do. You have to make a decision. Is that statement freely and voluntarily made any type of a Miranda violation if they're in custody? They're, they're sitting there in handcuffs on the side of a road. If the state wants to get in... But Judge Adams has already ruled on I know. part of this already. I know. I mean, so that's part of it. I mean, so... I agree. So I was just... That's why I did a motion with me and a motion to suppress. So I don't know what I'm doing except sitting there waiting for whatever arguments I make. But the state stands up and is talking about I'm, I'm trying to have this court rule on something already ruled on. That's not the way I'm saying the law. You're not. You're I never saying. did that. I never told anyone that. It's not in my motion. It's not in my words. I never said that. Ms. Love just created that. Well, she read it wrong. It doesn't matter. Then Ms. Love said, okay, it's not, if, unless Cedric Jones, who's not on the state's witness list, comes in and testifies, that is an out-of-court statement. That is an out-of-court statement. It will be subject to an objection. Exactly. It doesn't come in. I'm objecting. Okay, but, but wouldn't that be when they lay the foundation and if they can lay it in order for me to, wouldn't that be objectionable at that point in time? Oh, that's a fucking photographer for YSL. His statement is an out-of-court statement. He would have to testify at trial if they want to use He suppressed the statements. If you look at that transcript, I could give you the exact page. The officer was in the courtroom, and he stood up from the bench and pointed his gavel at them, and he told them, you got to do better. You don't Mirandize people. It's in that transcript. I'm going by my memory, but I'll find it for you. It's at the end. The judge that initially ruled that pointed his gavel at the police officers and said, you have to do better. And, and you know, to Ms. Lev, I'm not, I'm not trying to attack you. If, if you take a step back and objectively look, maybe you would hear what I hear the court saying. Thank you, sir. Your Honor, I want to make it clear to um, the court that I in no way feel as if I'm being attacked. I feel as if I'm in a bizarre kind of circumstance where I'm accused of misrepresenting facts. And um, counsel for Mr. Williams read into the record exactly the things that I said before a court who is being asked to admonish a party for making valid objections. And that is a different circumstance that I find myself in. Nevertheless, you said there were frivolous objections. She's saying there valid look at she got a fit on today likewise the statement between williams and jones i believe was a con that con that was a conversation between two co-defendants that was captured on the video again that wasn't in response to a statement asked by any officer i agree that they were not mirandized at the time however on the video on the body cam they got the conversation of defendant williams asking defendant jones why would you tell them that my bag is your bag and so we're not going to seek to have those statements come in thug said why would you tell them that my bag is your bag in violation of, of uh, not being with miranda and that the miranda came 40 minutes after mr williams was in custody so the, the, the court's interpretation of the ruling uh, and the decision based upon what has been heard and the appellate opinion is uh Ms. Love, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna admit those statements at this one time i must have that mixed up right there i thought he was he sounded like he was gonna let them in they sat there for 40 minutes before before they were read miranda and then also the Miranda was not proper. So this is a police officer that pulled over uh, Thug in 2013. Thug was driving someone else's car. As I was getting him out of the car and putting him in, in handcuffs, I observed a clear plastic bag with some blue pills in plain view uh, in a little cup holder mm -hmm. of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. I then put him in handcuffs, removed him, put him back to the patrol car, went and retrieved uh, the blue pills that were inside the plastic bag. Um, did you document the serial number of that handgun? Yes, I did. I ran the serial number on ACIC and it came back stolen. Come on, man. Thug wasn't driving. He was traveling. Charged the driver with any offenses? Uh, yes, I did. And what were they? I uh, charged him with uh, possession of controlled substances. The blue pills turned out to be Xanax pills. Uh -huh. uh, possession, theft by receiving, uh, stolen firearm. Driving around license, improper left turn, and failure to be traffic control device. Now, who was the driver of that vehicle? I was a black man named Jeffrey Williams. Okay. Now, Thug's lawyer's going to come up and ask him some questions. Do you do something to refresh your memory about this stop? Uh, the police report, yes. And which police report is it? Uh, it was the police report that I made on December, uh, September 9th of 2013. And is that what you're referring to on the witness stand? That's correct. Video made of this in any capacity. Uh, and I say this, I'm talking about this stop. I believe there was video made. I believe the actual video got hacked uh, back when the same letter got hacked. So nobody can find the video. The body cam footage got hacked. And I think he said when the state of Atlanta got hacked. Did something happen in 2013 I don't know about? What the fuck is he on about? People are pretty soon. They're going to archives and look for it. We couldn't find it. And there was other officers uh, that are assigned to handle video footage. Uh, they did have them back then. But like I said, uh, when they downloaded the stuff, I think the city of Atlanta got hacked like right around that time frame. So I don't know where they kept the archives, uh, hard copies of them. Um, do you personally remember this stop? 
Yes. How come? Uh, when they brought it up to me earlier this year, in reference to it, I started, started looking at it, and then I just started reviewing. Well, when, I, when I approached the car and I started engaging conversation with them, as I asked them to get out of the car and I'll put it behind his back, told me I'm going to arrest for driving without a license. As I started moving away from the car, I could see that in the cup holder that uh, there was a plastic bag with some blue pills in there. Can I approach you now? Yes, sir. I'm going to show you, and I'll mark it. Show you what I'll mark it for today. Mr. Williams, number one, today's date. Search incident to the arrest of the vehicle he was driving, I found in the center console area of the vehicle, a small sandwich bag with seven blue pills that turned out to be Xanax, that, and he did not have a prescription for them. Do you see that? Thug's lawyer just handed him another report of the same incident that's different than the other one, maybe. I think bro is turning a little red. I'm not even trolling. I think his face looks more red than it did like four minutes ago. I got no idea where this woman came from. In Mr. Williams number one, does it say anything about seeing an item in plain view? And which one, the defendant's exhibit? Mr. Williams number one, yes. The one in, written in red. No, it does not. Okay. So one of the reports says that there's nothing in plain view, like the pills or whatever. That's sketchy. Why would that be different in a fucking police report? And your fucking footage just happened to be hacked. Can you explain how on one of your reports is different than another on that? issue on that topic. Bro is yeah, baffled. Look at him. Your Honor, my objection comes from the fact that the witness has stated that he is not familiar with that particular document All right, so and Mr. Steele is asking him why something is different on one document that the witness did not bring in and another document. It's going to be tough because it's where I got in discovery from the state on this gentleman. Your Honor. But, but you still, I mean, okay, but he's, in order for him to ask him some questions, he needs to confirm or deny that. I, I'm, a, so, I'm asking, I'm asking, that's my question. Can you explain where Mr. Williams number one came from? Your Honor, that was... I have that was not bus. the question, and I well, my question now. Hold on. All right, can you answer that, sir? Do you know where it came from? This one? Where, where D1 came from. The one that's written in red. Where D1 came from, and it does look very similar to the report that I wrote, that I had actually brought in with me. There is a difference between the report, the D1 report, due to the fact that they did update and change their system from an old ISIS system, which is the D1 report, to the new report, which is on Mark 43. He's saying it's a new system. That's why they're different. So one's an old system and one's a new system. But how do you leave out a detail about seeing something at plain view? Can you explain why there is a new report? Uh, no, actually I can't. I can't further explain. Do you know why reports would be from 2013, September 9, 2013, would be rewritten three years ago. I object, years ago. Your Honor, to the characterization. Rewritten. Uh, sir, do you know why the reports are different? Uh, don't, don't guess, but if you do. Um, no, I can't. Did you authorize the report that was made three years ago? Did I authorize the report that was made yeah, three years ago? Did you have any involvement? Which one? With State's Exhibit Number 1, the one from, that you're calling from three years ago. Yes, I did authorize that one. Why? Because that was part of the original one that uh, was actually done. I thought the original one is Mr. Williams number one in red. Your Honor, I object to the characterization of D1 as the original one. The witness stated that it looks like once. So he authorized the report that was different than the original report from 2013. What is D1? Well, it's not D1 actually has some written stuff on it that is not similar to what is in uh, this is so good. This is so good. Ugg's lawyer grilling a cop that pulled him over 10 years ago. Can you explain that? Your Honor, I object again because the document given to the witness is not the one that he brought in and asking him to explain something like that. Let's just see if you can answer it. Okay, then I'll... Uh, like I said, I cannot explain that. Just through the fact that someone did write uh, the defendant's exhibit, so it has been altered in some way, shape, or form. So this is a shit show. If there's a document that's 10 years old that's altered with handwriting and he has no idea and he's the arresting officer, this shit shouldn't be in the trial. That's just my opinion, but whatever. Your Honor, this is a document given to me by the state of Georgia in discovery. Miss, Miss, excuse me, Miss, Miss Love has it on her desk. Okay, well, are you still, still subject to foundation? That's, my foundation is that this is the report that this gentleman said, yes, this looks like the report from the old system. But we got to know where it's coming from. So you need to, I mean, do you have a, we don't know anything about the, about how this report system uh, is generated. I mean, it may be admissible. 
a little more foundation, but you're not going to get it from this witness. Or it's identified, yeah, but I'm not going to admit it. But I'm saying to you, it, is, it, would, it might be admissible if you laid more foundation as to it, because if you got the person from the computer system or the custodian of records to come and testify about that, because he's got no basis for that particular testimony. And he's told you that. He says, listen, we changed our computer system. That's it. And it may not be admissible, Mr. Steele, but it won't be admissible at this point in time for the purpose you're seeking it for. Well, I, I, what about an admission by a party opponent giving me this document? <laughs> this judge, I feel like, always finds a way to side with the prosecution. <laughs> like we have two different documents here that show a very different story of how the whole arrest happened. But it's not the report that he authored. Yes, it is. But it's been changed and he can't, yeah, remember, it's still subject to foundation. Okay, I'll call Mr. Love no, as the next witness and I ask a pause on Officer Monon. Your Honor, no. <laughs> He called her Miss Love as a witness. What a legend. He got it during discovery, but that's still, that's still, that's still, somebody did it. Account for it. So subpoena somebody, but you can not, don't subpoena Miss Love right here. No. She is the commander of the discovery. Yeah, I'm you to allow you to call. Cap, what is Mr. Williams number one? Is this the old? You don't object? Excuse that's me. Been, no. no let, me, let me finish this question, okay? Is this the old way that, or, or the previous way, I guess, in 2013 when reports were generated? Your Honor, I object. As for asking answer, I object as to... I'll sustain as to ask answer. It's a memorandum of an event that he did at the time. We he don't made know, it. Mr. Steele, it's still not going to change certain foundation that you're required, okay? Uh, he's saying, he's, he's already testified before me that, hey, he doesn't know how it got changed, and that's not true to him, so you're stuck with his answer at this point in time. Now, if you can find out, or you think he's he's not, I'm not saying you are, but you're, if he's lying or something like that, at some point in time, then I'll take it up further at that point in time. I don't understand the court's reticent. The, the city of Atlanta is part of the prosecution team. Yeah. This is a document that I received in discovery that this Mr. gentleman Steele. identified. With all due respect, I've ruled, move on. Okay, well, I'm moving it. It's in the record, and if I have to admit it, it's being, it's being identified because you've shown it to him. So it's in the record for that purpose, but I'm not admitting it. And I'm making a proffer to the court and the appellate court, if needed, God forbid, that this Honorable Court is not taking notice of the contemporaneous writing of this witness. Mr. As Steele, this is totally improper. Why? Because, you're not, because you are trying to testify about something that is not, that you don't have the ability to do so. I'm making a proffer. Move off at this point. I'm making a proffer for the appellate court. That is not the proper way to make a proffer. Why? Because you are proffering something that you know is not attributable to the state or anybody else. You don't know how. It's to do. What so until you until you do that, I will accept the I will accept the uh, the document as submitted at this point in time for for identification. I'm not going to admit it at this point. I'm this admitting. is the second time I'm telling you this. I'm but I'm if you go ahead and get somebody to come in here and we have a and we can you can tell me how it was how, you know how it was in in, in fact. Um, altered or changed, but I'm telling you, at this point in time, it's not admissible in terms of because there's not enough foundation and it's not attributable to this particular witness. He's already told you that. I kind of understand what the judge is saying that they need to figure it out later on, but goddamn, it's interesting, dude. Why is there a different document of this police report? The state's exhibit is different from the original police report 10 years ago with details, bro. That's insane. Would the dash cam video have captured the goings on in this stuff? That's correct. The only thing it did not capture was the audio. Uh, the audio was on like a little device, it looked like a little pager, and that recorded the audio, but it didn't record the video between myself and the person that was inside the car. It only recorded the bigger picture, which was the car itself. Oh, so it just happened to record the car that Doug was in, but it didn't record the POV of inside the car. So you could see if it was actually true that it was visible. And find that the... Uh uh, stop was in fact proper and the evidence that was in, uh, that was seized uh, would be proper pursuant to the pursuant to the stop and, pro and probable cause so i'm going to deny so he denied that one the two motions one was granted by the judge and one wasn't but holy shit was that chaotic dude things got heated this trial is gonna i feel like this trial is gonna go on until springtime like literally april yeah i'll keep covering as you mentioned subscribe for my twitter and instagram fucking love you guys peace out